Hi, YouTube friends. I'm Heidi Viegas with Healing Harvest Homestead. And today, this morning, uh, we are going to be working with birch oil uh, or balm of Gilead, it's often called. And these come from the buds of the cottonwood tree. Now, recently I did a video, actually it's been a few months, um, of us foraging for cottonwood. Uh, and we talked about the tree and we talked about how to go about getting the buds and gathering them up. Um, to make this balm of Gilead. Now, balm of Gilead is kind of this mysterious uh, recipe that nobody really knows what it is. <laughs> so there's a lot of um, uh, hypotheses about this magical uh, balm, but it's very healing and it relieves pain. A lot of people like to use cottonwood buds to make their balm of Gilead because it contains a chemical, methyl salicylate, that um, helps reduce and relieve uh, joint and muscle pain. So it's really wonderful. You can use this by yourself or the oil, the infused oil, or you can add some essential oil. So I'm going to talk about it both ways, but today I'm gonna to show you how to go about using the infused herbal oil. I'll talk also a little bit about the tincture. Now, this time of year is the time of year for many of us to start um, getting out there and foraging for cottonwood buds and um, you know, getting them prepared so that you can make your own balm of Gilead. So step one is to go foraging. So I'm gonna put a link to my foraging uh, cottonwood um, or poplar, which you, either way you wanna say it, they're both interchangeable uh, buds in the link above and also in the description below. So if you are interested in foraging right now for that herb, uh, watch the video and it will help you. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to work with this beautiful um, herbal infused oil. Now this is, these are cottonwood buds that um, I showed you how to make in that video I'll link to. And uh, we're going to go ahead mm, and strain this off. It's very, very strong. It's been sitting for quite a while. I'll show you what one of these buds looks like here close up too. They're pretty, um, really neat. That yellow golden color that you see on the jar, that is uh, from the resin. And it's got another compound that's really kind of rather numbing in it, but it's, this is just a really great plant for helping uh, relieve different kinds of pains and things like that. Um, so here I'm just straining it out. Here you can see, I actually just dropped this whole branch in with the buds on it. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and, but most of these are just the little individual buds. Like this. Okay, so be sure to watch the video about foraging and gathering. Um, and you can get an idea of this. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and quickly make the salve. I'm gonna talk with you about how to do it without the essential oils, but I'm going to use essential oils in mine. I formulated a quick little recipe that's going to uh, synergize with the chemicals in this herb infused oil to make the pain relief qualities even stronger and more powerful. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna pour one cup of the infused herbal oil into my pint wide mouth mason jar. I'm gonna set this aside and I'll go ahead and bottle this up and save it. I can use it for more salve later on or I can use it for soap or, or you know a number of different things. Um, it's great on the skin. Uh, poplar is is really a helpful uh, herb and um, it does a multiple things but it's it's very healing and um, and soothing to many skin irritations and things like that, as well as just being a great muscle rub. So um, you might wanna give it a try. The next thing I'm going to put in here is beeswax. The beeswax is to uh, firm it up so that it becomes a salve. There are different ratios you can use uh, to make your salve or your ointment. Um, I prefer to use um, of a higher ratio of beeswax than some, but uh, it's just what works for me and it always has, and people really like this formula. So it's one cup of the herb infused oil to one quarter cup of the beeswax. So you can 
Reduce this in half. If you only wanna make a half a cup of the oil, then you would use an eighth of a cup of beeswax, or you could double it um, either way. Um, some people don't want to have it be super firm. So if that's the case for you, you can certainly uh, reduce the amount of beeswax that you use. Uh, making herbal salves is extremely flexible and, and very simple. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to take this um, uh, combination of beeswax and oil and I'm gonna put it in my double boiler system over there. My double boiler system simply consists of a pan with about an inch and a half to two inches of water. And I like to use a little cloth on the bottom. Sometimes I don't if, I, if I'm in a hurry, which I kind of am today. And I'm going to go ahead and sit this into the pan and let it simmer until the beeswax melts into the oil. Okay, I just wanted to show you what this looks like. Um, this is just a regular saucepan, and like I said, it's filled with about an inch or two of water. And here I've got my oil with my beeswax, it's melting. And I have it simmering actually a little too hard. <laughs> you don't need it this high. Um, so I usually have it going a little bit lower. Um, I'm turning it down right now. But anyway, uh, and often I'll put a dishcloth or something on the bottom of the little jar so that it doesn't uh, jiggle around. But um, this is just a pint jar. If I'm using a quart, I will just put a cloth in here. All right, so when this is all melted, we'll get back to the sap. All right, so while we're waiting for the beeswax to melt completely into the oil, I'm just gonna talk with you a little bit about some of the safety uh, and contraindications for poplar and also the essential oils that we're going to use um, in this uh, particular salve recipe. So, because of the content, the high, very high content of the methyl salicylate in this plant, um, we're going to basically just say that if you are on blood thinners, uh, you need to ask your doctor. In fact, you should always just ask your doctor before you use any herbs or essential oils if you're on any kind of medication or if you're nursing or pregnant. Just a, a, a safety reminder of, of how powerful herbs and effective they can be, but you do need to be using them with some knowledge. Um, now, in order to compound the pain relieving effects of the poplar buds in this salve, I'm going to use five different essential oils. Now, because I've got um, about 10 ounces of oil and beeswax combined, I'm going to be using a pretty high number of drops. I'm going to be using 144-ish drops or so. Um, that is between a two and 3% dilution. If it were one full cup, it would be a solid 3% dilution, but because it's a, there's a beeswax added, it's a little bit less. And that's, that's as strong as I want it to be. If you wanna make it stronger, you can actually go up to a 5% dilution. And if you're wondering how many drops that is, um, you might want to invest in my um, ultimate guide to essential oils and safety. It's a wonderful guide. It's got tons of dilution um, charts for different populations of people and even pets. So it's a really good investment. Um, it's like $17, so it's not, it's not real expensive. I want to show you the essential oils really quick. Um, can you see the difference in the layers? So I went ahead and I, I added the golden oils at first, and then I added the German chamomile. And German chamomile happens to be a blue oil. And so you can see very clearly how they don't necessarily mix right up. You have to do that yourself mechanically. And I'm here, I'm using a glass stir rod just to be sure I get it all mixed up. And um, let's go ahead and talk about the essential oils really quick. I'm just gonna check this here. Ooh, it's almost ready. All right. So first off, we've got ginger, and I'm just gonna tell you the number of drops I use. You're not gonna have to sit there and painfully watch me drop all these drops in. I use 35 drops of ginger root. Ginger root is very warming and stimulating and has very strong anti-inflammatory properties. I'm just going to turn that off and let the beeswax continue to melt into it. Okay, so and then next up, we've got black pepper. 
Black pepper has a chemical in it called B-caryophyllene, and it is a wonderful, wonderful anti-inflammatory. So that is why black pepper is in this blend. It is also very warming and very, very soothing to sore muscles and joints. So it's in here for that reason. Next up, I've got balsam copaiba or copaiba balsam. Uh, it's copaiba reticulata. I love this oil. It, all, it is also very high in B. caryophyllene, just like black pepper is. And it is well known for calming moods and soothing pains. So it is in this blend for um, its pain relieving properties. It really doesn't have much of a scent. It's not a really strong scented oil. Um, but it blends really well with uh, the black pepper and the ginger. I love this combination right here. Next up, I've got birch oil. Birch oil is actually fairly uh, rare. Um, it's kind of hard to find. It's Betula lenta. Um, a good substitute for birch oil is wintergreen essential oil. It's also high in methyl salicylate, just like birch is. So this is kind of like a topical aspirin, all right? Uh, you should never use this internally, by the way. Uh, and uh, But that's what this is for, and it's just going to help um, boost the benefits of these other anti-inflammatory uh, essential oils. German chamomile, I just love. <laughs> it's one of my favorites to use in pain relievers. Uh, it's one of the blue oils. The blue oils have a chemical called shimazoline that causes them to be blue. But generally speaking, the blue oils are also very, very helpful for pain and uh, inflammation and things like that. So that is why the German chamomile is in here. Um, Scent-wise, what you're going to have with this is kind of a... Um, Mm. It's a nice, warming, spicy scent. The German chamomile gives it sort of a little bit of a floral. And then I have to tell you about the scent of the infused um, poplar oil. It smells delicious. It's got a, it's kind of, um, I don't know, like a piney resiny, only not strongly of pine. It's more pretty, <laughs> for lack of a better word. All right, so we've talked about the essential oils, and I'm just going to really quickly tell you the number of drops. So I don't think I did that for the other oils, but we've got 35 drops of ginger. We have got 35 drops of black pepper. We've got 35 drops of copaiba. We have 25 drops of the birch, and I've got 20 drops of the German chamomile. I'm going to set these aside. And that's what I've got going on in my little glass here. Okay, um, let's go ahead and get our uh, infused oil. Just gonna wipe that off here. So the water gets in here. This is um, an anhydrous. Uh, cream or salve, so you you don't need a preservative in it, okay? It's really nice. It's easy to make, and it lasts a very, very long time. And, um, yes, you don't need to worry about adding a preservative or an emulsifier or anything like that. Super, super easy. So what I've got here is um, about a cup and a couple of ounces of my now beeswax combined oil. I'm going to pour my essential oils in there. I'm going to stir it up very quickly. Look how that blue uh, oil in the German chamomile turned this really golden oil green. It was pure gold a minute ago, just like you see here. Now it's green. <laughs> I just love what the plants can do. It's just always amazing to me. Wonderful. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and pour them into my tins. You want to do this all this tart fairly quickly. So here I've got four two-ounce tins, and I've got an additional little tin because I know I'm going to have extra, and it's a one-ounce tin. I actually may still have some leftover oil, but um, hopefully this will work here. So I'm going to go ahead. Ooh, this is kind of hot. Hold it up here by the rim. Just going to pour this into my tin. Yep, beautiful. Pour it into my tin. Now, after you pour it, you want it to let it sit and cool down and completely set up. You don't want to be moving it around um, because you want it to be pretty, <laughs> right? You want a nice, smooth, beautiful top. So if you don't move it, that's what you're going to get. 
a beautiful, smooth top. Oops. Um, I tend to kind of overfill these sometimes, but that's okay. I like a nice little tin. I just want to try to use all of my oil up here. All right. I can tell you right now, this smells amazing. It's going to be a very, very helpful um, mm, salve. It's, it's wonderful, and I'm really looking forward to using it. And now that um, poplar buds are starting to pop up uh, this time of year in some places, it's almost time for us to go foraging for some more. And I really love foraging for the poplar buds. It's one of my uh, favorite plants to go foraging for because um, it's one of the first early spring plants that you can get out there and start working with. And I just love that. In our area here in northern Idaho, February-ish, uh, uh, maybe early March is the good is a really good time to go searching for them unless you're in like a little banana belt area. <laughs> and uh, but other places like southern Nevada where we lived before, we could forage for these even in uh, January. So because the trees bud out a little bit earlier in that area. So this, that's how you make the salve. It's going to set up and be just lovely. And I'm going to go ahead and bottle up the rest of my oil. And tincture-wise, I've got a tincture going on here. And you strain it off exactly the same way, bottle it up. And this tincture is very, very helpful for soothing pains and things like that, headaches. I personally feel like it's stronger than willow bark after comparing the two and using them for a while. So I always turn to willow bark tincture first, but if I, we need something a little uh, heavier duty, we go for the um, the balsam uh, tincture and we just use it sparingly. We don't use it a whole lot. It's very powerful. Um, it's also got a bit of a numbing effect. So, um, you know, I say uh, take it easy on that. Don't use it consistently, but it's wonderful. It's a wonderful helper too. <laughs> All right. I will see you guys uh, in the next video. Please subscribe. I would really appreciate that. I have a lot of free gifts for you in the description below. So be sure you click into the links and uh, take advantage of those. There, uh, There's some good things in there, like my free herbal remedy guide for 10 common herbs that you probably have in your kitchen right now, um, as well as their essential oils if they have essential oils. And um, there's a free herbal steam guide that's really wonderful. If you're experiencing congestion of any type at all, herbal steam, they're one of my favorite ways to combat the congestion uh, of allergy, cold, and flu, things like this. All right, I'm going to sign off. I'm Heidi Villegas with Healing Harvest Homestead. I hope you'll continue watching the channel and subscribe. I love you. Bye-bye. <laughs>